Good morning and welcome to this day where we are celebrating our patron saint, Saint Luke. And just as um, a note uh, for clarification for those who are here, uh, in your bulletin, the first reading is not as it has been for the past several weeks from Jeremiah, it is actually from Sirach, which is a book of the Apocrypha, um, so not included in the Tanakh, what we call the Old Testament, uh, but still one of those works we look to uh, for wisdom from time to time. Uh, so because it's part of the Apocrypha, not the, the larger canon of the Old Testament, uh, we're also uh, not doing the, the word of the Lord there. Instead, it'll be here ended the reading, which is no response from you guys. We'll just go straight into the psalm after that. So please just note uh, that one thing for the bulletin. Uh, for those with us online, uh, you can follow along in the links uh, in the description for this video for our service. So now we'll start our worship for Holy Eucharist. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be His name, now and forever. Amen. We continue now with the College for Purity. <clears throat> Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and prophets. We'll say together now, Gloria. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace to the will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, and have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, we receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, and have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, who didst inspire thy servant Luke the physician to set forth in the gospel the love and healing power of thy son, graciously continue in thy church the like love and power to heal, to praise and glory of thy name, through the same of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is from Sirach. Honor physicians for their services, for the Lord created them. For the gift of healing comes from the Most High, and they are rewarded by the King. The skill of physicians makes them distinguished, and in the presence of the great they are admired. The Lord created medicines out of the earth, 
and the sensible will not despise them. And he gave skill to human beings that he might be glorified in his marvelous works. To them the physician heals and takes away pain. The pharmacist mix, makes a mixture from them. God's work will never be finished, and from him health spreads over all the earth. My child, when you are ill, do not delay, but pray to the Lord, and he will heal you. Give up your faults and direct your hands rightly, and cleanse your heart from all sin. Then give the physician his place, for the Lord created him. Do not let him leave you, for you need him. There may come a time when recovery lies in the hand of physicians, for they too pray to the Lord that he grant them success in diagnosis and in healing for the sake of preserving life. Here ended the reading. Please read responsibly with me from Psalm 147. Hallelujah! How good it is to sing praises to our God! How pleasant it is to honor him with praise! The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the harp. He covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve mankind. He provides food for the hawks and the birds and for the young ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by the might of a horse. He has no pleasure in the strength of a man. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him, in those who await his gracious favor. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. He has established peace on your borders. He satisfies you with the finest wheat. He sends out his command to the earth, and his word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters hoarfrost like ashes. He scatters his hail like rounds. Who can stand against his cold. He sends forth his word and melts them. He blows with his wind and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and his judgments to Israel. The second reading is from the second epistle to Timothy. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Do your best to come to me soon. For Demas, in love with his present world, has deserted me and gone, gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful in my ministry. I have sent Tychesis to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas, also the books, and above all, the parchments. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Lord, 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 Lord. Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, 
He went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to God Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. One of the first things you see as you come to our parish here at St. Luke's is our sign. And right there at the bottom of it, it says scriptural and traditional. Since these are among the first words that people see as they come to our parish, one might say that these words define us. So on this day, when we celebrate Luke, the evangelist for whom we are named, it is fitting to ask ourselves, what does it mean to be scriptural and traditional? To do that, we first have to look at what we hear from the Bible. And it just so happens that our gospel today gives us a very good look at how Jesus viewed these two things, tradition and scripture. Now, we'd be hard pressed to call Jesus traditional, at least in the way that the religious teachers in his day and age would have viewed tradition. Now, there are many ways in which Jesus falls into the tradition of the Pharisees. It's important for us to remember because we've inherited that tradition, not just from Jesus, but from Paul. And that tradition continues too in the Judean faith as well, the faith of our fellow Jews among us. The Pharisees are very important in that sense, in the tradition we come from. But even though Jesus follows in these teachings, Jesus still questions the leaders of the Pharisees quite often. We also see Jesus being baptized by John the Baptist himself. And being baptized in that day and age showed a following of, of that particular set of teachings. But Jesus at the same time doesn't just go and follow after John the Baptist. No, Jesus creates his own following, has his own disciples. And he often refers to John the Baptist as the one preparing the way for the bridegroom, the bridegroom being Jesus himself in this world. Now, at the same time, Jesus, like all good Jewish boys, went to synagogue on the Sabbath. 
And not only is Jesus there at the synagogue on the Sabbath, but we're told, we hear in Luke, that doing so was Jesus' custom. And Jesus even reads from the scroll that's handed to him, the scroll from the prophet Isaiah. This too was a typical action in worship in Jesus' day and age. Now, in reading this scroll, we also hear Jesus' thoughts on this passage from the prophet Isaiah. And again, the passage that Jesus reads is this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. The reaction Jesus gives to this passage is this. Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Now, Jesus honors the traditions of his ancestors before him. In doing so, he looks to the wisdom of the past. But in doing so, Jesus has an eye not only to the present, but to the future, to see what God is working, what God is saying to us in the present, what God is specifically saying to Jesus' fellow Israelites, fellow people from Nazareth in his day and age, but also looking to what that is going to mean for them in the future. So while Jesus does look at the past, he does so with an eye to what is to come. Now, in order to be a church that, as our sign claims, is scriptural and traditional, we must do likewise. Like Jesus, we must look to the past and gain wisdom and experience from that. Use that experience moving forward, as Jesus does in his time with John the Baptist. We must also at times question the traditions we live in, as Jesus did with the Pharisees. But most of all, we must follow the patterns, the rhythms that allow us to better connect to God, to build our relationship with the Lord which is what we see Jesus doing, not just through his worship, but through his reading of scripture as well. To call ourselves scriptural, we must know it. That is, we must know scripture. And we're not called just to understand what the words of Scripture mean. We're called to live into those words as well. We're called to see how the words of Scripture apply to us today. And in seeing that, in seeing what Scripture still is saying to us, we're called to see how it is paving the way forward in our lives just as Jesus did through his reading of the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. We do so because scripture is not just something that is static or dead. 
As the author of Hebrews tells us, the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. We also learn about Scripture, and we will continue to learn about Scripture, and in four weeks' time, we will pray a collect that reminds us that we are called to read, mark, and inwardly digest the words of Scripture. Each Sunday, we read from the Bible, and we do so in a way we often get to read verse by verse each week, passage by passage. To be truly scriptural, that work that we do on Sunday, that continual path we take through that scripture, that work must continue each and every day during the week as well. We must not just read the scriptures. We must live into them as well. And that's what Jesus is trying to show us today. In both scripture and tradition, we see Jesus paving the way forward. Jesus does so in the ways that are tried and true. Through Jesus' worship and his reading, we see the way to come closer to God, to come closer in relationship to the Lord. And that may look different for us now than it did in Jesus' day and age. But our act of worshiping, our act of reading scripture, must be the same by helping strengthen our relationship with our Lord. We must also remember that Jesus had a much firmer understanding of the past than those around him. In the passage that follows after our reading from Luke, Jesus goes on to remind the people of Nazareth, to remind the people of his hometown, that there are many places, villages, towns like theirs that did not listen to God. And so God eventually went elsewhere. God eventually left them, just as they had left God. Jesus reminds his hometown, just as the prophets have been reminding us in this season after Pentecost, that if we follow in those wrong actions of those who have come before us, that we too will follow the same consequences that they do. Those who do not know history are doomed to repeat it. It's one of the lessons that scripture is trying to teach us. So as we gaze at the past, we also see the path that we can pave towards the future. And though that may look different than things do now, if we are to be scriptural and traditional, then we must continue, no matter what, to adhere to the tools that help keep us in God's presence. And the Bible will certainly always be one of those tools to help us do that. If our identity as St. Luke's is to remain scriptural and traditional, 
that we must wrestle with what that means. Jesus paves a path for what that looks like for us today. Can we follow him in doing that? And now please stand as you are able. And let us affirm our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the God of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things are made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost and the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory, to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is saved by the prophets. And I believe one holy, happy, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Kneeling, let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer up to thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Daniel, our bishop, Trey, our priest, as well as Francis, Bishop of Rome, Bartholomew, Archbishop of Constantinople, and all other denominational leaders, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and in every land, especially Joe our president, Tom our governor, John our mayor, and all our local elected officials, 
that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O oh Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O oh Lord, to comfort and succor Mary, Julia, Davis, Joseph, Gavin, Tom, Harry, Susan, Laura, Blake, Cameron, Jerry, Rose, Barb, Carla, Logan, Jennifer, Debbie, Brittany, Pamela, Kazen, Faye Young, Joan, Ken, Jerry, Michelle, Susie, Becky, Marie, Ed, Art, Harriet, Jim, Lee, Todd, Laura, Blake, Cameron, Fiona, Pike, Claire, Mike, Ron, Frank, Fran, Ginger, Victor, Kate, Barbara, Carol, Taz, Jaden family, Barb, Barb, Bob, Dobby, Jimmy, Stephanie, Anthony, Brian, Annie, Ike, Claire, Bill, Sue, Alexandra, Isabella, Linda, Shauna, Tammy, Liz, Patty, Christine, Lucille, Rich, Andrew, Tom, and Jimmy. And all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We give thanks and pray for those celebrating birthdays this week. Jean, Ben, Ronald, Fred Jr., Megan, Michael, and Jeffrey. We give thanks and pray for those celebrating anniversaries this week. Mark and, Mark and Krista, Todd and Jennifer, and Lou and Susan. We pray for the children, teens, and college students of this parish, and for those serving in the military. We pray for the life and witness of our companion parish, St. Mark AME Zion Church Newtown, and St. Paul's Levittown. Lord, look graciously on thy church, and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a rector for this parish, that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for thy people and equip us for our ministries. We offer up any other prayers at this time, whether aloud or in our hearts. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed in this life in thy faith and fear, especially T. Calvin White and Christian martyrs throughout the world, beseeching them to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Joseph, her most holy spouse, Luke, our patron, and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Taking a moment of silence for reflection, let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins of wickedness, which we, in the time of time, most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is really sent to us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in this life, in the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Oh, 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Give the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a true saying worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. And now please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Oh, yes, sir. Please show one another a sign of peace. And peace to those who are with us online as well. You may be seated. Well, not a whole, whole lot to uh, throw out there for the announcements, but we do have quite a few things. So please do look at the back of your announcements when you get a chance. Uh, particularly for things like what we need for our food pantry um, and for other things like uh, that uh, we're still looking for pictures uh, for uh, our uh, profiles. So uh, if you've got any pictures, uh, particularly from the last five years, uh, please let us know, send them our way. Uh, this week's Faith Fact kind of ties in with the scripture and talks about how we go about choosing what our scripture readings are uh, in this season after Pentecost. So please look at that at your leisure. And uh, please also note that uh, the formation today uh, will once again be after uh, the 10 a.m. service around 1115. So we will have an online option for that. We'll be continuing the conversations we've had and we'll be starting in uh, what will be the focus for uh, this month, which will be on the Anglican service. That's all I've got for the announcements. Um, don't forget, uh, we do have our sign-in sheet in the back if you haven't done that already. And we do have our offertory plate in the back, so please place your offerings there. Those with us online, please uh, feel free to send your offerings into the church. Now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
Our service now continues with Eucharistic Prayer 1. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very neat, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, to the great shepherd of thy flock, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who after his resurrection, sent forth his apostles to preach the gospel and to teach all nations and promise to be with them always even unto the end of the ages therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore praising thee and saying holy holy holy, holy, holy lord god of hosts heaven and earth are the lord Glory be to thee, O Lord, Messiah. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Well, glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for the vow of thy tender mercy that give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. Who may thereby his own oblation of himself once offer a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty, with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. We most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness for sake to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all of thy own church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and may one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, Yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with him, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover, once for all, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table of merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ is left. The body of Christ is not The body of Christ is not The body of Christ is not The body of Christ is The body of Christ is not The body of Christ is not
Our service now continues with the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for the God that feed us in these holy mysteries, for the spiritual food and most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And just assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, who are also heirs to hope of thy everlasting kingdom. We humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us on our through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious. May the Lord shine the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. And blessing God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. And now I'm going peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.